Welcome back to SpaceX in the News. Glad to see you all back here. Congratulations on surviving 2021. Hope you had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. On to 2022 we go. Of course, I'm your host, Kevin. This is our first episode of 2022, released on a Tuesday, so I'm glad you found it. We have made our members exclusive episodes available to everybody now, so you'll get an episode on Tuesday and our normal episode on Friday. If you've never seen one of these Tuesday episodes, it's basically the same thing, only a lot more laid back. We take it at a slower pace and I share more of my opinions. But if you don't care for the longer Tuesday format, don't worry, we'll still cover Tuesday's main points in our Friday episodes. And although now both episodes are publicly available to everybody on Rumble, YouTube, Odyssey, what have you, uh, you can still support the channel on Locals. There's a link in the description and you'll get all kinds of extra content like behind the scenes or gaming or uh, whatever else we have to discuss, maybe uh, watching an Elon interview together. In today's video, we're gonna discuss everything that's happened with SpaceX since our last Friday episode on December 17th. So let's get into it. Beginning with the evening of Friday, December 17th, when Elon took to Twitter and shared a really cool video he captured underneath Booster 4. Starship Super Heavy Engine Steering Test, those nine inner Raptor engines gimbling. Of course, this is what keeps the booster and the Starship that's stacked on top of it upright. It also helps steer the rocket back to the landing tower and make that soft uh, catch. However, for this booster, it will be landing in the Gulf. It's like the coolest heavy metal dance I've ever seen. Each Raptor 1 engine above produces 185 metric tons of force. Raptor 2 just started production and will do 230 plus tons or over half a million pounds of force, which is like over 20% more power, which is pretty awesome. This, however, he just twatted yesterday. Raptor 2 now operates routinely at 300 bar main chamber pressure. Now keep in mind, Raptor 2 development is the bottleneck that Elon is, I guess you could say, is kind of concerned about. But he has stated in, in recent interviews over the past month that they've gotten the issues worked out and things are looking a lot better now, clearly. More upgrades are coming for Starship and its boosters. The next one will have 33 Raptor 2 engines with 13 steering instead of the nine we just saw that were dancing. Ship is being upgraded to nine engines, three sea level gimbling, six vacuum fixed with increased propellant load, so they're gonna stretch those tanks. The diameter of the Raptor 2 throat is wider than Raptor 1, so at any given time you can push more propellant through it, which means if you want it to run as long as a Raptor 1 engine, you need to add more, more fuel, more propellant. And while we're on this topic, Elon did confirm yesterday that the methane header tank, which is a smaller tank used for the landing burns, is being moved from the methane tank itself up into the nose cone where the LOX header tank is. He also confirmed uh, the day after our last episode on December 18th that they're still aiming for booster four and ship 20 for the first orbital test flight. This is pure coincidence referring to 420. There were rumors going around there for a little bit that they were just gonna make these vehicles another test bed, but those turned out to be false. During our little break, I received an email from the FAA concerning their final PEA, which they were supposed to release on December 31st, if you remember back. However, they were informing everyone that they decided to push that release to February 28th, 2022, because they got over 18,000 public comments uh, concerning the draft PEA. I believe those comments were submitted in like early October, I think October 18th, if my memory serves me correctly. So what that means is nothing's going to happen as far as orbital flights is concerned until at least, you know, March, more likely probably April, I don't know. SpaceX does have quite a bit to do yet. However, shortly after, Elon did confirm that the FAA's approval is the schedule driver for Starship Super Heavy 420, maybe giving them reason to kind of take their time when it comes to booster and ship testing. But nevertheless, testing is what they are still doing. On Wednesday last week, they static fired SN20 for a fourth time. They were gonna do a fifth, but they aborted it. During the static fire, maybe one or two heat shield tiles were lost. Big improvement from uh, the third static fire. And then yesterday morning, Monday morning, the tiles that cover the, the spots where the, the lifting pins go were removed. So it looks like those are gonna be reinstalled to move Starship here in the, in the near future. So this video provided by Lab Padre shows after the static fire, SpaceX brought out their, their new Boston Dynamics robot, their new pooch, Apollo, kind of dragging something away from the rocket, some sort of sensor, I imagine. As far as SN20's booster is concerned, Booster 4, it also received some testing over the holiday break. On the 22nd, it was cryo-tested, filled with either LN2 or liquid oxygen. And then the following day, its Raptor engines underwent some sort of igniter test, creating sparks, pretty sparkles. On the eve of New Year's Eve, the booster was actually lifted and taken off of the orbital launch pad and put on a nearby mount. 
It appears SpaceX is looking to do some tests with the chopsticks, those robotic arms that will catch boosters and starships in the future. For the first time on Sunday, they moved up and down the orbital launch stand like five feet or so. We do have more tests scheduled for today through Thursday, so keep an eye on Lab Padre's live stream to see all the latest and greatest going on with that. Otherwise, we'll pick it back up on Friday. Before Christmas, NASA actually came on site there at Starbase to take a look at the Starship hardware. We had a couple astronauts there that actually rode previously on Dragon. And of course, NASA is interested because they have a contract with SpaceX to use Starship to land people on the moon. A couple other little things to quickly go over. Eagle-eyed cameraman Starship Gazer down there at Starbase snapped a few pics of the Starship nose cone, the next generation ones that are currently being built underneath some, some tents. Booster 7 is under construction in the high bay, its LOX tank being uh, recently stacked. And the next door to the high bay is the wide bay, this picture provided by RGV Aero Photography. <laughs> it's going to be completed before we know it. They're becoming professional vertical assembly building builders down there in Starbase. Moving on to some other news, SpaceX did have a couple launches during the break, starting with Turksat 5B on December 18th. Ignition. And lift off. A beautiful night launch with a beautiful landing on the shortfall Gravitas drone ship and a successful deployment of the communication satellite. My uh, gratitude goes out to all of you who joined me live for this one on Rumble, thanks to Big Tech censorship. It was actually a really great experience though. Rumble made us their top video. Just a couple days later on the morning of December 21st, SpaceX launched another mission, CRS-24, a resupply mission to the International Space Station. If the first stage didn't look sooty enough for you, that's because it was a new booster, which is a rarity for SpaceX these days. And it did land successfully on the drone ship, just read the instructions, marking the 100th successful landing of an orbital class rocket booster. However, being a new booster, apparently it didn't have its sea legs yet because on the way back to port with choppy waters, it almost uh, fell overboard. Like literally just inches away. It, it damaged one of the uh, guard rails on the side there. It ended up damaging its legs and all of its engine bells, but uh, they ended up getting it off the drone ship, but it's, it's currently still sitting down there at the port. I'm not sure what's gonna happen with it. The next launch looks like a Starlink mission, slated for no earlier than Thursday, January 6th at 4.49 p.m. And while we're on the topic, China recently criticized SpaceX and Elon Musk for their Starlink constellation, saying that for safety reasons, the new China space station had to implement preventive collision avoidance control. And I guess this news threw China's twatter equivalent into a frenzy with its Chinese users saying that Starlink was just a pile of space junk and what have you, throwing their, their hate and their shade Elon and SpaceX's way. Meanwhile, at the same time, apparently not caring that their own communist government is committing genocide. The Chinese did submit an official report to the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. Those tattletales. In the last little bit of SpaceX news for today is that just before the year ended, SpaceX managed to raise over $337 million in funding, bringing the total for the year 2021 up to $1.85 billion. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Christmas Eve, Europe launched the James Webb Space Telescope to space. The most powerful space telescope ever made, 100 times more powerful than Hubble. Over the weekend, it did encounter two minor issues, one of which concerned the sun shield tensioning motors. Apparently they were exposed to too much sunlight and started to heat up. And the other had to do with the solar array output, but both issues were fixed. A couple days ago, the telescope began tensioning its massive sun shield, and NASA just reported today that it completed the operation which is the size of a tennis court and keeps the $10 billion telescope cool enough to do its science. Well, that wraps up this one. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll see you right back here on Friday for our next episode. And until that time, Godspeed.